Welcome to edition 24 of All Kill and All Filler podcast with me, Rachel Fairburn and Kerry pritchard McLean. Just before we start, we'll do our usual disclaimer. This podcast is because we have a mutual interest in serial kills. It's not hero worship. We've both got strong father figures in our lives. And as long as we're doing this podcast, it stops for us from writing to them in prison. Uh, episode 24. 24. This is a big bastard, isn't it? Yeah. Because we've gone for a killer couple, um, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. And this was a suggestion, wasn't it? This was, Twitter? yeah. Thank you very much to the person uh, that suggested it. We did have your name written down and now we've forgotten, but we will <laughs> we will thank you later on. You know who you are. You That's know. how we should have done it. Yeah, It's a bit like an insult, that. You know who you are. <laughs> um, fucking Carla knows who she is. Oh, doesn't she just? Um, their nickname is pretty cool. It was the Ken and Barbie Killers. It's pretty cool. I just... I like it when you sort of get the, the thing mixed up at the beginning. So you said, instead of Ken and Barbie Killers, you said... Ben and Carby killer, <laughs> which sounds like an insult, doesn't it? Yeah, like, when a woman's put on loads of weight <laughs> in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah they are. Ben and Carby. <laughs> <laughs> but they were called that because they were very beautiful, allegedly. Allegedly. I also, whenever I hear the Ken and Barbie killer, I, I kept thinking Bert and Ernie killer. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. That would be if Jeffrey Dahmer and Dennis Nielsen did get together. Wouldn't Quite it? sweet, really, isn't adorable. it? Adorable. <laughs> I mean, this is it. Like they were called Ken and Barbie Kills because they were good looking. They were all right. They were good looking. How everyone was in the nineties. Yeah, they like that's very big hair, isn't it? Yeah, big hair. What a big tan. Sort of tan teeth. Yeah. They were all right. And this is what people were shocked by by what we're going to talk about. All the things that they did. And I was like, oh god, how could such good looking people do such horrible things? Which I will say to you: Have you seen Johnny Depp's latest films? <laughs> And other things. And other things, allegedly. 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 So we'll start with Carla. Carla Leanne Homolka. She was born in 1970 and was the eldest of three daughters. Yeah, she had quite a normal school life. Everything's normal at at, at first. She had boyfriends. She wasn't very bright. Well, no, because she ended up going out with a... Marrying a rapist. That's very (laughs) true. Uh, Yeah, which means she wasn't very bright. She loved animals, though. Worked in a pet shop. Like Lenny from of Mice and Men. <laughs> like Lenny from of Mice and Men. Or, uh, or a stereotypical typical barber. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because you worked in a pet shop then a vet's. And I, I think they're both different models of Barbie, aren't they? I think you can get like pet shop Barbie and vet Barbie. Backseat of the car Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, they're very like jobs from that era, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> but stay at home mum Barbie. <laughs> Burka Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> That's very modern, Rachel. <laughs> I run a Tumblr blog, Barbie. Well, she worked in this vets, and this is quite important that she works there because she stole drugs from there, which she used mm-hmm. in their crimes later on. Indeed. And this is when she was 17. She was working at a pet shop, and, uh, she, in a vet, and she was at a vet school as well. She was enjoying it. And she, when she was 17, she went to a pet food convention. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know what that is. Because I, I know conventions usually are like... Well, they're usually like comic ones and everyone yeah. dresses up. Like, for those dressed up as a pedigree jumbo and or something. Yeah, a tin of chum. <laughs> I, ever, I ever think as well, a convention can be like, it's either something fun or something racist. <laughs> yeah, that's there's just, no... there's either a bouncy castle or the confederate flag. Yeah. Or there's... both, it sounds great. <laughs> there's no in between, really. That happens when Rachel and I live really near each other in a quite a rough area of North Manchester and there's a pub nearby called the Alliance and whenever they've got a stage in the car park yeah. I'm like is that outdoor karaoke or a rally yeah there's, what is going on <laughs> yeah you kip or karaoke that's the game I like to play he was seven years older than her but apparently there was immediate sexual chemistry yeah she walked into this hotel bar that he was sitting in uh, he was he lived there I think didn't he in, in the area at yeah. the time uh, she walked in and apparently it was a love at first sight fireworks she was completely smitten by him and within I think about two and a bit hours she was in his room with him 17 as well what, yeah. an, what an empowered young woman I know That's it was I lust say. at first sight not people say love at first sight no love is when you stay up all night talking about your hopes and dreams it's not when after an hour he's balls deep yeah. in it that's not <laughs> That's not love, is it? Um, and all this goes on in uh, in Canada, doesn't it? It does, Which yeah. just goes to prove that not all Canadians are lovely. No. <laughs> um, in a place called Scarborough, which I find really funny because British people know that Scarborough is a notorious coastal shithole yeah. <laughs> in Britain, in the north of Britain, in Yorkshire, isn't it? Yeah, which I wanted to love so much when I went because I'd never been and I was gigging there, doing my stand-up comedy. 
<laughs> as, as people like to say insultingly. Doing a turn. Doing a turn. And I was like, oh, brilliant. I've never been to Scarborough. I'd love to go. Got there and I was like, get me out of here. <laughs> Just wasn't wasn't for me. I went for um, a trip. My boyfriend, I, I treated him to a night in a hotel there because they've got all these grand hotels from when it was mm. Victorian. It's amazing. It's called, I think it's called the Victoria Hotel. It's a huge, gothic amazing building that they built to commemorate Queen Victoria's stay. And we pulled up and he went, oh my God, look at this. And I was thinking, I've only paid 30 quid for this room. And he went, I wonder if there's a sea view. And I thought, I know there's not because it was two quid more and they didn't pay for it. <laughs> but he came running into the building and it's, it's shaped like a V for Queen Victoria. He went running in. He went running in and went right, he, like, he literally was so gleeful. And um, it's amazing in there because it is like really old. So like you walk in and it's got this amazing lobby and a split stack. It looks like the Titanic, except there's people standing around going, what do you mean you can't smoke in the bingo? It's awful. And there's hand pumps everywhere because everyone's got the Nora virus. <laughs> And then we were running to he ran into the room, right? <laughs> ran. Ran in, running everywhere. Went up to the window and looking for the sea view, but we were in like the middle of the V. So all it was was a bit of flat roof with a dead seagull on oh. it and some cigs. And then I was like, I did that stupid thing where I did the seagull die from smoking? <laughs> I imagine so. Yeah, yeah. It's a terrible thing, Rachel. You need to stop. And I did that. I did this stupid thing where I'll buy something cheap and then retrospectively look on TripAdvisor, mm. which is not why that. Website. No. That website's not built to regret the decisions you've already made. <laughs> Just to confirm the bad choices. <laughs> yeah, well, I knew. <laughs> so I was looking at it and it was it was a mix. So like, here's the lobby, here's the staircase, here's a picture of the ballroom, here's the theatre, here's the blood we found on the bed, here's the view. It was literally showing like blood they'd found on it. Oh, God. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. So Ooh. that's Scarborough. So we imagine it all taking place when we're talking about yes, this. Yes, that's what we imagine. A decrepit seaside town that oddly <laughs> is full of like marauding Geordies. On it is. So stag, stag and Hendridge, yeah. yeah. I mean, actually, actually the, the beach is quite nice there. Yeah. The scenery's nice. It's They've just... got a pier, one of those, is it, what's it called? Volta, the guy from Big. Oh, Zoltar. Zoltar, yeah, yeah. got one of those down there. So that's quite cool. Yeah, it's not worth a three hour drive there. No, and I think maybe I went at the wrong time because the gig wasn't great. Yeah. But, you know, there's no trip advisor for that. So, <laughs> no how, was I, how was I to know? For bad work decisions. <laughs> so, Paul, uh, he, we'll talk about him a little bit. Born August 1964. Yeah, he was born in Scarborough. He was the youngest of three. His mother, Marilyn... Uh, All Marilyn's are beautiful, you think? Maybe not this maybe one. Maybe not this one. Apparently she was verbally abusive, and his dad, Kenneth, who was very wealthy, was also physically abusive and a bit of a pervert. Yeah. Um, he Marilyn got a bit sick of Kenneth's shit and had an affair. Paul was the result of that affair. Now, Kenneth knew that... And knew that he was illegitimate, but fair play, stepped up mm. to the mark and brought him up as if he was his own. Um, or, and in fact, maybe he didn't bring him up as if he was his own because he sexually assaulted his daughter and didn't, that we know of, sexually mm. assault Paul. So maybe it's a good job that he was not he was illegitimate. When 16, Paul found out that his dad wasn't his real dad. His dad was a rum one as well. He, he got caught fondling a yeah. really young girl, was a peeping Tom in the area. He was like a, basically a sexual deviant yeah and Marilyn became I think she became a bit depressed to be honest because she became massively obese and just stayed in the basement of a house and didn't yeah. didn't go out anywhere didn't do anything Paul though was... I'll be honest though that is my dream scenario if, if like life and society didn't expect anything from me I would be a size 30 I'd be fed through a tube and I'd just want, watch Netflix all day on a commode so it sounds to me like if Mar- you know when people go hashtag living the dream Marilyn was living Marilyn the dream Marilyn was living the dream <laughs> Paul as well was, was friendly and happy and cute and sweet as a child, wasn't he? Yeah. Little dimples. Dimples and... and everyone was like, oh, he's the boy that you would want. Like, he was, yeah. he was a boy scout and all that kind Polite of stuff. Polite and well-mannered. And then, when he was 16, he became a peeping Tom as well. Yeah. Although his, uh, his girlfriends in high school said that he was a thoughtful and considerate lover. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in high school, you don't have lovers. <laughs> you might get, you know, I just see it as a bit like, who am I fingering behind a bin this week <laughs> is, like, the general... He was general... very thoughtful and considerate. He did wash his hands before and afterwards. Oh, what a gen. <laughs> you don't love us in high school. No. Please. No, Come you have on. people who ruin your life for two months and yeah. you think it's the end of the world when you find out, yeah, that they've been fingering someone else. It's just ridiculous. So at 16, he was actually told that he was illegitimate by his mother and he took it quite hard 
uh, this is for many of you who listen to the podcast, that certain Ted Bundy, mm. who was also told that he was illegitimate, took it very hard, and then sort of got in with a bad crowd, didn't he? He did, and he, he got to a point where he was having arguments with his mother all the time, he was calling her a slob, calling her a whore, he, was, he hated his parents at this point. That's not like a 16-year-old at no, all, is it? No, <laughs> Did he slam doors as well? <laughs> <laughs> he started hanging around with the, the neighbourhood bad boys who oh, were yeah. doing petty theft and stuff like that they had bad attitudes and all the rest of it and he wanted to be a rapper as well how embarrassing which let's be honest with his attitudes towards <laughs> women he would have been fantastic <laughs> attitudes towards money as well because they're fucking shit with their money aren't they didn't um, 50 Cent go bankrupt recently I think he did yeah, yeah. yeah. well uh, Paul got involved with a pyramid scheme mm. called Amway Business which is what all fucking idiots do and Kevin Bacon all the people, I went to university, a very bad university, and all the um, girls who did drama, who are very beautiful, so thought they would get work and haven't, because they're not that great, are now in pyramid schemes. And one of them was telling my friend Ed about it, was explaining it, and Ed went, mate, that sounds like a pyramid scheme. And she said, they said you'd say that. I'm like, well, you know what? That's what pyramid schemes do. No one who gets a job at Tesco's... They don't, Tesco never go, people are going to tell you this is a pyramid scheme, but it's not. You're just on P-A-Y-E. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. Pyramid schemes go, people might tell you this is a pyramid scheme, but it's not. Here's some more magic beans to sell. Yeah. I mean, I want to know is like when she said, they said you'd say that. <laughs> Who's they? Yeah, the fucking cult That's that terrifying. she's joined. That's who it is. So he's got involved with this and he thinks he's going to make loads of money. And he's, it's a mark of arrogance, really, I think getting involved with stuff like that what accountancy no like getting involved with like the pyramid scheme going oh, right, I'm going to yeah. make millions like yeah. it's it's a mark of stupidity and arrogance which are very unattractive qualities <laughs> in most people well he had several relationships with, with women who all ended the relationships when he started to become sexually abusive yeah apparently when he so he went to the University of Toronto and he was known for trying to have forceful anal sex with his sexual partners. Sorry, is there any other kind of anal sex? <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever had unforceful <laughs> anal sex. Think, what are you doing? Yeah. You can't change lanes without indicating. Like, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think anyone's... Also, I think... Uh, no one's ever had romantic No, anal no one's sex. ever made love in the colon, have they? <laughs> I'm going to... When you come home tonight, I've got a bath with some candles and then... <laughs> I'm going to do you up the bum. <laughs> you're like, oh, no, it's fine. But he was known for this and being sort of like, he was getting more and more sexually deviant. I don't like that word because it sounds like a Victorian word for, I don't know, using lube. Like, but... Or a bit deviant, a, bit, a bad magician. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> sexually aggressive, yeah. I think would be a better term. And would, was sort of into sort of humiliating his girlfriends. A lot of them would break up with him because he would try and humiliate them in public, which sort of... Um, and I don't mean wearing a cowboy hat and a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt. I mean, like, being really fucking horrible. And it, like this sort of crept over because he was this Scarborough rapist who was raping yes. girls in Scarborough on campus and things, wasn't he? Yeah, this was in May 1988. Seven women had been attacked. And what was happening to these women, they were being grabbed uh, when they got off a bus or maybe they were walking through a park. They would be grabbed and dragged behind a bush or something and they would be beaten violently and be told to call themselves names, to humiliate yeah, themselves. Yeah, like whore and slut yeah, and and he would um, rape them. Toronto police got statements of these women. like, that's not the most humiliating thing that I could call, like, a whore or a slut. That's... What do you think's the most humiliating? Fat. <laughs> Fat. <laughs> Unfunny. <laughs> Something like Disappointing. That. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I'm not angry with you, I'm just disappointed. Just spouting out things that people have reviewed us with. Fucking those words, we were talking about that, that only women get called brassy. Brassy, yeah. Feisty, that can fuck off. She's feisty. Uppity. Oh, you mean she's told you to piss off? <laughs> yeah. She's a feisty one. Yeah, feisty is a woman who won't let you grab a tit on a night out, who slaps you. I find contrary as well. We, uh, we I think women get contr- called contrary more yeah. than blokes. Emotional, hysterical. Oh, you're being hysterical. Yeah, I hate bubbly. Because only fat fat girls get that. She's very bubbly. Yeah, which is like, isn't, it, isn't she brave to have a personality when she's dead to society for being overweight? Good for her for going out. Good for her. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? She's, she's not in all black. She doesn't give a shit, does no, she? look at her with a pink t-shirt on. Good for her. Oh no, she's coming over. <laughs> in 19, October 1987, he said to Carla, what would you think 
if I was the Scarborough rapist. Because he'd already attacked three women before he'd met her. Yeah. And her response was, I think it would be cool. Really? Oh, God. Yeah. At that point, I wonder if she knew that he was... Maybe she just thought he was being silly. I don't... I think she knew. Do you think she knew? I think she knew. I think that was her way of going, I think I know it's you, and I'm okay with that. That's a very weird level of deviant chicken, isn't it? To go, what if I was a rapist? Well, I think it would be cool. Like, I think that's weird. I think she's going, I... I'm on board with this. I mean, we all play that game where you go, what would you do if, you know, I had an accident and then I was in a wheelchair, would you stay with me? Oh, here we go. Well, <laughs> have you not heard my version of this? <laughs> okay, I, this might get cut. I always have this thing that, like, I adore my boyfriend, he's a smasher, but I think when the going gets tough, he'll get going. So every now and then, I like to test him. And how I'll do that is I will pretend I've been in some horrible accident where I am paralysed from the neck down and he has to take me to the toilet. And I'll be in bed and I'll be like, you need to take me to the toilet. And he's like, stop this. And I'm like, you've got to take me to the toilet. And I can't go and I'm paralysed. And he's like, stop it. And I'm like, no, because this could happen one day. And I need to know that you will step up to the mark. And like twice I've nearly pissed the bed because he's just gone downstairs. And I'll be like, I need a toilet. And he's like, just turns up his Zelda, the volume on it. Does he get annoyed? He gets really fucked up with it. Stop it. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm like, or I'll be like, I'll be on the toilet. I'll be like, I can't get off. You need to help me. You need to help me put my knickers on. He's like, stop this now. It's it really nice. Get on. <laughs> you can't tell me. Well, can, you can't just ask. It's very easy to say, of course, darling. If you were in a car accident, something awful happened, I would stay with you. I want to fucking see him. I want to see. Some I want to see him slump me over his shoulder <laughs> and carry me to the toilet and then wipe wipe my ass. <laughs> That's what I want. And then you'll be satisfied. <laughs> then I'll know he loves me. <laughs> oh, God. Um, That's definitely getting cut. I don't think you should do it. I just think you should keep this in. This is, so it's right place got these statements. This is 1988. Carla knows that he's doing this. Definitely. Uh, in autumn 1988, Greg McCreary, who's an FBI profiler, they had to bring him in because the attacks were escalating. And he made a, a profile of a person that he thought was the, the rapist. So he said it was a high-functioning person who was still dependent on the family and violent in relationships. And that was bang on mm. had they known about anything at this point about Paul Bernardo. Yeah. Because uh, he was still living with his parents. He was high-functioning. He was yeah. busy. He was working. He was trying to be an accountant. And he was violent in his relationships. So it was good, but it, unfortunately it wasn't very helpful. Well, it wasn't very helpful if it was on its own, but they also had a composite sketch yes. that they got from all the women he'd attacked, but they didn't release it for some reason because they thought it would, like, they'd get loads of false leads and it would panic people. Now, Carla knew at this point mm-hmm. that it was him, and one woman even remembered seeing a woman at the scene when she was being raped with a camera recording it. And mm. the police went, no, you, you probably just imagined that okay. because you were hysterical. Another great word that only women get called. Now stop being so sassy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, if you went to a boss who, we might believe you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, she was dismissed as hysterical. And if they'd have picked up on that, that it would have made a difference to the whole trial because, again, that's sort of in, implying that Carla was willingly involved in these acts. The composite sketch was bang on, though. This was the yeah. interesting thing. As we'll get to it a bit later on. It was like those ones that you... Like those accurate ones that you get, you know, from someone on the side of the street that does you play in volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> it was excellent, apparently. But he'd already attacked three women when he'd met before or when he was with Paula. And she knows about this now. Mm. She's not concerned. She's obviously... I mean, if she, if the person that was being raped did, did see a woman with a camera, I'll guarantee that that was Carla... I'm not a rogue tourist. <laughs> you think you know it's some I mean? street theatre? Yeah, it's like, on oh, the street theatre. <laughs> Scarborough's very cultured, isn't it? 1990, he was spending lots of time with her family. They loved him they as thought, well. They, they thought, thought it was brilliant. wonderful. Um, he, he, ha- he had a job as an accountant, but he'd lost it. So now he was making money from smuggling cigs over the border. Well, it's a fine line, isn't it? <laughs> it's a, quite the leap, isn't it? Accountant's a shit pirate. <laughs> it's very... Well, they're both like trying to fuck money out of the tax system, aren't they? Yeah. They also get engaged on the 29th of May, 1990, don't they? Mm-hmm. And this, this was at Niagara Falls. They'd, they'd driven to Niagara and... Hack. Yeah. Paul proposed to Carla. I'm in trouble with their names. I just yeah, want to say Paula, Paula, like, you know, you, when you put, like, Benefer, like, Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's an old one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> He's had like six wives since then. Old Henry VIII Affleck. I don't know who anyone is anymore. Mm. So he proposed to her, and this is interesting because it's 29th May 1990 that he proposed to Carla, and this was the same day the composite sketch was released. The police decided to release it. Paul's friends, several of them, independently contacted the police because they said, we think it is Paul Bernardo. It is actually a really good sketch. Because yeah. normally they're like you know, a bit weird or like, yeah. well, it doesn't look like that. like those flip books. That yeah, he looks like the, the cartoon from, you know that um, Aha take on me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like that kind of drawing oh. in the video. Um, but the, yeah, the, all these friends went, this is him. So they uh, they arrested him and got Great him. mates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shopping him straight away. Um, although uh, they maybe he was still with the bad lads. True. Who knows? True. But they because it was so it looked so much like him, they got a DNA sample from him. They did. Which Brilliant. Gave, and this is the end of it, isn't it, Rachel? You would think this would, this should be the end of it because you think, oh well, this guy's been mentioned, and I know they've got a backlog, and I know they've got stuff to deal with, and I know DNA wasn't as good as it is now. Then uh, it sounds like I'm talking about a drug, doesn't it? <laughs> but he'd given this sample willingly, and it was put on a shelf in a lab, and nothing was done. And this is when he moves. They move to St. Catherine's. Mm-hmm. And what happened was the rape stopped in Scarborough and went up in St. Catherine's. And nobody put two and two, put together. two, and two together. Even though this is someone who's they've got a DNA sample for. They've got several independent people saying he looks like a composite sketch. Yeah. He matches the profile that they had. The police didn't push that DNA sample to the top of the list or anything. So he moved and with him the rapes moved. They did. But he became obsessed with Carla's younger sister, Tammy. Yeah, he was 15 and adored him, apparently. Yeah, and he used to sort of shower her and her friends with gifts and things and like buy them food and pop. What, what's pop in American? Soda. <laughs> Soda. Um, <laughs> yeah, he'd buy them that. And But apparently when the drinks and sweets and things, well, the drinks he would buy, they would have an oily film on them and they think he'd been trying to drug Ew. the girls for a while. Because he would peep, he, he'd peep in through Tammy's window. He'd wank over her while she was sleeping. In fact, Carla enabled all this. She broke the blind on Tammy's window so he could get into her room at night without disturbing anyone. And he, he also took Tammy over the border with him when he was doing one of his cig runs. Got her drunk, because I think maybe mm. the age in that state was younger. Got her really drunk and said to Carla, yeah, we got drunk and made out. I don't know, the biggest fucking alarm bells... <laughs> If you're gonna, if you're gonna let that happen, you're gonna let anything happen. Do you think? Without a doubt. I mean, I've got a younger sister, and I don't particularly. Don't think so. Don't think so. <laughs> doubt it. I don't particularly <laughs> like her. I do. I, of course, I love her. She's a nuisance, but I wouldn't let a boyfriend that I was with drag her over a border and get yeah, her drunk and that's true. Bother it or or do anything to her. You know what I mean? I'd start. I'd start to question if she was still a child and the boyfriend I was with was yeah. showing an interest yeah no it is it is all wrong as annoying as she is I wouldn't let that happen <laughs> and I'm a good person <laughs> that's on record now so it you're is. safe Amy <laughs> so in 1990 they made her spaghetti and they drugged it with um, drugs that she'd got from the vets yeah, with Valium how depressed are these pets <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, maybe they're the pets of serial killers that have seen too much like Myra's dog and <laughs> Bleeps in there Pop with a fag bleep. in the corner, yeah. like Lady in the Tramp, like, I've seen things. And that's why all these... Th- yeah, that is weird, isn't it? Yeah. That they're on Very volume. strange. But they... Um, I have to be honest, you know, since we've mentioned soda and pop, all I can think about is an American drink called Cactus Cooler, which is the most delicious thing oh, really? I've ever drank. And I know it's... What's re- it taste like? I don't know, but it's just really nice. It's like tropical, but not. And it's... Shit, have we just found someone who can sponsor us? Yeah, Cactus Cooler might do <laughs> We're it. We're desperate for a sponsor. And Rachel, the only thing Rachel can think of, which I think is a cracking idea, is bleach companies. <laughs> yeah, bleach would be great, but Cactus Cooler would be even more delicious. <laughs> it's a great drink. If anyone from America does know anything about Cactus Cooler, remind me of the flavour. I think it's, I'm sure it's orange and lemon or something. I just remember drinking that's it a lot. shit. That sounds like a oh, normal I'm pot. telling you, it's delicious. It's got a really friendly cactus on the front. And I got <laughs> obsessed with it when I was in America. Uh, absolutely obsessed. All Ooh. right, they, they've got those shops every now and then that they open up where they sell just like American food, don't they? You're never going to get a cactus cooler. You reckon? Never. All right, there's not, one in it's Edinburgh. Not, but it's not I can popular. Get you one. Oh, really? No, it's not. It's like, I used to buy it and people would go, why are you drinking that? I'm like, because it's delicious. Is it like the Shandy Bass? It's the... <laughs> 
like of, uh, sorry, Americans won't know what that is. It's just terrible, <laughs> and you can only buy it in chippies. <laughs> it is nice though. <laughs> With a nice bit of chips and gravy and a bash shander. <laughs> no. Very nice. Anyway, anyway back, to the, uh, back to all the rapes. Back to the rapes. Now, this, when he drugged uh, Tammy this time with the spaghetti, she'd woke up before he could attack her. She, yeah, she, he'd started to sexually assault her and that's what brought her around. Yeah. And they were like, oh, you've just, oh, you've had a, you've passed out. Are you okay? And yeah. you know, sort of po- probably frightened her a little bit. Yeah. What went on then? things get even more out of hand because Carla decides for Christmas she wants to give Paul Tammy's virginity as his Christmas gift. Fucking hell. I thought I'd had some shit. I've yeah. had book vouchers and I've been pissed off one year. That is the most... That is, we've talked about a lot of horrible things, but that is one of the most perverse things I've yes, heard. Yes, it is. Without a doubt. And this also, is... were they assuming she's still a virgin? That's very true. Maybe they read her diaries. Uh, I used to use code in mine. Did I thought you? it was code. <laughs> pretty obvious when you just draw two fingers next to something doesn't it <laughs> and a bin <laughs> um yeah so this was on the 23rd of december wasn't it the evening of the 23rd of december mm. the family they'd all been around uh, having a family evening it was like one of the, they had a christmas party every year and i think it was one of their christmas parties or something wasn't it they got hammered on rum and eggnog oh. cocktail which sounds fucking that is disgusting. too heavy <laughs> That's heavy, that's heavy drink, that, isn't it? Like, to me, that, that would have the same sensation as putting a vodka shot in a McDonald's milkshake. Yeah, that's, or in an omelette. Yeah, it's too much, isn't it? Uh, but that aside, <laughs> the family went to bed, so the, um, Carla's parents went to bed and all the other siblings, and what they decided to do was stay up and drink this horrendous cocktail, um, and they put animal tranquilizers in it, and they also had a halothane rag didn't they so they prepared for what they were going to do yeah this is all premeditated so Tammy drinks the the cocktails passes out he puts the halothane rag on her you know just for to to ensure she's not going to wake up and burns her face in doing it the halothane burns her which will become relevant later so they get the TV they tape this as well they have a video camera and they tape it Paul raped her and also Carla raped her own sister and filmed it and let this happen and orchestrated it which is possibly one of the worst things a human could do. While her parents are asleep upstairs. Yes. And it gets even worse because Tammy vomited and choked. She choked yeah. on her own vomit. And instead of them helping her and, you know, phoning an ambulance, they took her back to her bedroom, dressed her, cleaned up, and by this point, the poor girl's dead. They were actually vacuum, vacuuming at whatever time it yeah, was Yeah, because the, the family didn't, were like, I wonder why they're changing the bed. They were, like, doing laundry in the middle of the night, and, and they thought it were, oh, they were just cleaning up from the party because they're conscientious. So they called the ambulance, they came, and she died, or she died in hospital. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve, yeah. And they'd videotaped themselves doing all of this. And in fact, later on, they found videotapes after Tammy had died of Carla pretending to be Tammy Ugh. in her clothes and talking to Paul as if she were Tammy. That is just creepy. It's fucking horrible. It's oh, it's horrible. It's yeah. just the one of the really weirdest things. In. Tammy's death was treated as a tragic accident. Like, oh, teenagers, what are yeah. you like with the drink and the drugs and the eggnog? Well, the, like, and the burn on the face, they were like, the hospital I was like, this is a bit weird. And they, they were like, oh, it's we think it's just carpet burn from them trying to give her CPR mm. to bring her back round again. So there was a few sort of clues... And obviously if they'd tested her system for drugs, they would have found that she'd been drugged. But I guess when you just see a kid who's choked on their vomit at Christmas after drinking loads of omelette, rum omelette, then you just go, well, this is just a really sad accident. Let's not give her a pose more. You know, like, I guess that they were just trying to do the best thing by the family. At this point, they move, they move then, I think, don't they, to Port Dalhousie in St. Catharines. At this point, Carla's getting a bit scared because Paul is constantly telling her He's going to tell her parents yeah. what they've done. I think she's getting a bit panicked. And Do you think? I think so. I don't think she feels bad about what she's done. I think she's frightened that he will tell her parents and I think she's frightened that she will go to prison. I think that's the only concern she's got. I think that's her only worry. Do you th- yeah, well, she definitely doesn't... Re- I don't think she does no, regret it. I don't think she's sorry in the slightest. But this is when they decide... There's a 14-year-old girl, Leslie Mahaffey, and this was 15th of June, 1991. She'd missed a curfew... She'd been to a funeral, hadn't she? Yeah, she's only 14. She missed this... She'd been to this funeral and missed her curfew, so they just locked her out. I don't really understand how you... Things run over at a funeral. It's not like there's going to be something unexpected like them waking up. Buffet. 
But if that's true, there might have been a really good amazing wake buffet. buffet. <laughs> I do like a wake. I've never been. I've never been to one. Really? No, no, I've been to funerals, but I've never been to the party fucking, afterwards. I just love a buffet. I love a buffet. I like food made by distressed relatives the best, though. <laughs> so I think if I did have a buffet at a funeral, I'd be like, this is the best food ever. Or a wedding, because it's, you know, distressed relatives. A bit stressed out. They're distressed and distressed. Delicious. Yeah. A triangular ham sandwich. Yeah, or the best egg mayo I have is always Ooh. at funerals. And Ooh. I love a bit of egg mayo. I fucking love a buffet. Pork pie cut in four. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of pickle on that. Do they have pork pies in America? Do let us know if pork pies reached you. Oh, they've got to have, haven't they? No, it's, it's a Mel Mowbray thing, isn't it? I don't know if it's just a little delicacy. We'll do an exchange if that happens. One of you can post us some cactus cooler, cooler and we'll post you a pork pie. Pork pie. It'll be fresh because it's in a really weird <laughs> jelly. That's yeah. the worst thing, that jelly on pork pies. Ugh. So this poor girl, Leslie Mahaffey, turns up at her house, is locked out, goes around to all her mates, none of them will let her stay, but they're fucking regretting that now, the cunts. Mm-hmm. So Paul spots her wandering around. I think she's a bit of a naughty girl. Yeah. Because he comes up to her and he goes, uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to break into your neighbours. And her response is, have you got a sig? Yeah. <laughs> Which is like so fucking cool, like Greece, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, stud. <laughs> Um, so he leads her over to the car, says, oh, my cigarette lighter's in here, and then bundles her in and blindfolds her. And he took her to Carla, mm. like a gift. And apparently on the way he was listening to Bob Marley and David Bowie, which is annoying, because yeah. that's fucking bang on, music taste wise. You'd listening to some real shit, I they? think, actually, because this is based on his recollection of events. I think he was listening to himself rap, but he's too embarrassed to admit. Just gonna it. pop this on. Let me know what you think. He'll, he'll admit to like a, a, you know several rapes, but he's like, I'm not telling them. I was listening to my own song. Like occasionally, I listen to one of our podcasts, and I feel fucking embarrassed if it happens. I would never do it when anyone else is in the car, but I mainly listen to it to find out how badly I've edited. Yeah, just to check. But I think. I think maybe, you know, with all this stuff he's videotaping this, he's more likely to destroy his own rap tapes than he is <laughs> the awful things that he's done to these women. But he said, so they film them attacking and torturing and raping Paul Leslie. <sighs> and he says on it at one point, the next two hours are going to determine what I do to you. Right now you're scoring perfect. She was, I mean, she seems like a streetwise girl. She was sort of like playing along and wasn't, fighting back mm. and and I guess was like how am I going to get out of this alive because another clue to that is she had a blindfold on and it slipped and she told them she was like the blindfold slipped down um so her, she was going I don't want to see you because I want to get out of here yeah. alive and they put it back on but they didn't they didn't let her go no well what happened Carla said that he strangled Leslie but, but not, he said that he she gave her what is it Hals, halcyon is something it? she Some, overdosed on yeah it. on a drug that he she administered mm. so they both lie this is just like Ian Brady and Maya yeah. Hindley they both, they both said lies. the other one killed them so they left her body in their basement and the next day her in the the in laws came over her parents came over for dinner and she was in the basement the whole time like a fucking Edgar Allan Poe story. That's mad. It's just awful. I think I, I feel uncomfortable if people come over to the house at, at, like unexpected, and I know that I am cleaning my moon cup <laughs> in a mug in the kitchen oh somewhere. Oh god! Like if that's if that's soaking in some bicarb, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. How the fuck do you deal with it when there's a? So you have to do. Yeah, well, a baking soda, a bicarb, one of the two. What a white powder anyway. Got a boiler as well. I'm okay. not getting into this. You got to keep it clean, aren't you? I'm not. This is definitely getting cut. Don't judge me. I think me. you should leave it. In. On the thing, actually, not in there. <laughs> that was terrible. I didn't mean it like that. I don't judge you. I'm, I'm happy you've got different ways of. Collecting. Rachel, I'm trying to save the environment with my vagina. I don't care about the environment. <laughs> <laughs> this is well, we have to bear this in mind. What they'd done to this poor girl was just two weeks before their wedding. Fucking hell. And I imagine, I can just imagine him saying, oh, just one more before we get married. No, oh, really. Gone. Oh, all right then. Like one last big night out. Yeah, that's it. But what they do then to this poor girl after, because this is the Easter holiday as well. The girl, um, Leslie, they dismembered her. He bought twelve bags of cement and kept the receipt. Chopped her <laughs> Claim up. Claim it back. Yeah, cop, chopped her up with a circular saw. Put her body parts in the cement and then dumped it in Lake Gibson, but not well enough. As it turns out, no, because they couldn't be asked to burn them because it weighed ninety kilograms. So they just left it on the shore. And then a son and a fisherman found it, and this is in Ju- June 29th, 1991, and that it was reported to police. Now, I found that a bit weird. 
in that they found it. They just found a lump of concrete, presumably. Like, why is that? Look, what's that? What yeah, that why, what were they going to do? Smash it open and find a bit? I don't know why that then like brought it to people's attention because they dredged the lake, found these lumps of concrete, and poor... I always think this is really, really sad. She was identified by her brace. Mm. Which is always, yeah, just really sad. I think it's like, my dad is bad for like, I call it skip writing, like uh, picking up shit that's not his, like in skips especially. So, yeah, he's so he would have had that big lump of concrete, <laughs> probably put it in the garden as a feature with a sundial on top. <laughs> and then when it starts raining and the cement erodes, see a couple of fingers poking out the side. He'd probably find some other use for it as well. <laughs> yeah, doorstop. Yeah. This, this as well, the, the day... Um, Leslie's body was found was the 29th of June 1991 and this was the day Paula and Car I can't say the names Paul and Carla Paul and Carla what is wrong with me get got married so the news broke that the body had been found on the day they got married all these weird coincidences at this point I'd like to ask what the hell is going on at the DNA lab yeah because that sample is sitting on a shelf and nothing's being done it's been a year already isn't it that's mad isn't it so, in April 16th, 1992, um, Kirsten French is a 15-year-old girl. Carla comes up to her with a map, and while she distracts her, Paul pulls a knife on her and puts her in the front seat of the car, and Carla holds her down by the by her hair in the back seat. So it's definitely a double-team thing. Definitely. It reminds me of something I saw, though, on Crime Watch years ago, and obviously they have like, quite proper uh, journalists on there, and they were saying, um, giving a warning, they were going, women in the central London area are advised to be vigilant as a man is approaching women dressed as a tourist and asking them for directions with a map. And as the women give him directions on the map, he is manually pleasuring himself <laughs> underneath the map. Uh, women are advised to alert police if there's anyone in there. But it's so funny to have a, woman, a really posh woman basically go, so there's a guy who's going to come up to you with a map and he's going to be pulling his spine out underneath it and while pointing out things on the A, a to Z. So just be aware of that, girls. I just think it manually. <laughs> manually pleasuring. Because they don't even use, like, like masturbating is too jazzy. So it's, like, manually stimulating himself. Oh, God. <laughs> Pulling his spine out just sounds awful. Though, I love it, though. It's funny. Um... So she was. So she gave them directions. This is another thing where it's like it's always the nice kids, isn't it? Yeah. So Carla was holding her head down. And they drove her to the house. Now she used to walk home from school um, to take care of a dog. She'd need to walk her dog. So she was fifteen minutes late, and her parents were like, "This isn't like her," because she's home on the yeah. dot every day. So they phoned the police. The police followed her route back. Found her shoe in this car park of this church where they got her. Yeah, people had actually after they'd done a bit of an appeal, people said, "Oh, we actually saw her talking to two people that were in a car." And obviously, they thought, "Oh, she's just talking to two people in a the car." They hadn't seen anything mm. at that point. They started it's broad um, daylight. I know. They started a green ribbon task force. Then the police, and they started a search for the car that has been described by witnesses. Saw in the the parking lot. Mm. Parking look at me being all American. Mm. Uh, and these people said they saw a beige Camaro. Unfortunately, people this information was everywhere. There was posters, flyers. It was a false lead because people had described the car as a Camaro when it was a Nissan. So people were looking for the wrong car. Ah, but and maybe were off with that. I bet they were. And maybe if they were looking for the right car, yeah, they might have got it a bit sooner. But Nissan were like Camaro, taking credit for our work yet again. <laughs> But they took her home and horrendous. They raped her, tortured her, sodomised her, forced booze on her. Actually, I shouldn't have put that last slide. That's the worst one. Yeah. And th- one of the sad things is that they never blindfolded her, which shows that they never intended to let her go. Oh. They always intended to kill her. It's incredibly sad. Now, the, the media has started at this point to link... Yeah, the, link the murders. The, the murders, then the disappearances. This, it was the media that first went, oh, hang on a minute. She's getting a bit weird. Yeah, it's almost like the police didn't give a fucking shit, yeah. isn't it? Now, on April 18th, Paul went out to get pizza. And he was seen by Kerry, um, I think it's Patrice, how do you say her name? Patrick. Um, who had a restraining order against him because he was stalking her. So he had loads of fucking... He did have previous. It wasn't like he was a... He was not a Boy Scout anymore. And she said to the police, Paul, I saw I saw Paul Bernard, you need to... Bernard, you need to, like arrest him they didn't do anything and if they'd have gone over to the house that night in question going why were you here you know you need to keep away from her then uh they hope maybe searched the house and would have found her because the day after 
She reported them to the police April 19th. They murdered her. And then they went to Easter dinner with her family. Uh, Apparently, she says he strangled her. He says that Carla beat her with a rubber mallet and then went to fix her hair. Either one is absolutely horrendous. And, and they, I don't trust either of them as far as I no. can throw 90 kilogram cement block full of a girl on a fucking beach. No. They found the body as well, Christine's body, on 30th of April 92 in Burlington. And it was in a ditch in the same cemetery Leslie Mahaffey was buried in. So, And she was, very again, very hard to identify. And they cut her hair, hadn't they? Yeah, they'd washed her, they'd cut her hair off... People thought at first that that was a trophy, that it was serial mm. and they kept the hair for a trophy, but it wasn't apparently, because I assume the videotapes were the trophies. They, um, they'd done it because they made it harder to identify her. There was extensive media coverage at this point as well. Mm. So it's, you know, coming out in the news. And um, Paul and Carla's relationship becomes violent. Yeah, a weird thing happened at this time as well. They applied to have their name changed to Teal, right? And the name was taken from a serial killer in a 1988 film called Criminal Law. The serial killer is called Teal, and they both apply some kind of like sick secret joke to change their name to that. And this comes back later on, so just remember that detail. Yeah, their relationship had become violent. Yeah, and so on December the uh, twenty seventh of December ninety two, Hamolka she was beaten with a flashlight, Oof. face, head, limbs. Paul really laid into her. She went back to work on January the fourth, ninety three, and her co workers well, just called her parents immediately. I think she went to the hospital after that, didn't she? Yeah, Get so over. well, she, they were like, "Go to the hospital. You need to look after yourself." She's doing the usual, like, "I walked into a door thing." So they physically removed her from the house that she shared with Paul. And she broke free when they were doing it, ran back into the house to try and find something because she was worried that they were going to search the house, couldn't find it, and they removed her. So they made her go to hospital. They made her give a statement They because in hospital they photographed the um, injuries. He was arrested for battery, but then he was released because um, she wouldn't press charges and it was all like, it's a domestic, classic police stuff. Um, at this time, something good finally, finally. happened. Finally. 26 months after... The DNA sample, they realised that Paul is a match for the Scarborough rapist. God, he's took him long enough, hasn't it? Really has. So they put him under 24-hour surveillance. you think they'd fucking yep. arrest him, but... Someone in the police as well tipped off the media at this point that the rapist was the murderer as well. Oh, did they? So there was a whole load of backhanders going on. So the, the media had been tipped off and they were starting to do a few reports on things and, and get things together. But on the 9th of February, 93, the police contacted Carla to discuss Paul as the rapist. But they spoke to her in a domestic violence way. So well, she, as if it was about... Yeah, well, she would, they were like, we need to have a chat with you about this. But then they obviously were getting a picture of him built up. It was her who would avoid talking about the murders. When they talked about it, she would just change the subject. Mm -hmm. Because there was, you know, suspicion over Tammy. It was reopened her her death for a while. The the, the police were like, Mm -hmm. hold on, this is weird. But she would just change the subject and she would talk about his violence. Um, And then she was released. Um, So this is exactly the same as Myra and Ian Brady, that the woman is given a heads up to destroy evidence, get her story straight, whatever, because it's not... Obviously, a woman could never do those things. She confesses to her family, and then two days later, they hire a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And the lawyer immediately goes and says, we can help you with this, but you need to offer us immunity. On the 13th of February, this (laughs) fucking name change goes through. (laughs) It's all over the place. So, And the lawyer, her lawyer, who's quite inexperienced, goes to the director of Crown Services, and he says... My client has told me that there are videotapes of these attacks, of these rapes, of these killings. She can testify, but you need to give her immunity. Mm. Like, and she knows, Carla knows that there's she's on those videotapes, and but her lawyer apparently doesn't know. And they were like, we're not giving her immunity, but like we can see what we can work out. So he was arrested, seventeenth of February, nine ninety three. And they searched the house and they couldn't find the tapes. Yeah, they had a really weird search warrant. It was very weak. It was a 71-day search warrant. That's a good route round. It, it really is, <laughs> yeah. Although sometimes, you know when you tidy your room and there's more mess yeah. when you start? And then you, you go, just why like, have I even started this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, 
so there's a very weak connection. So basically, there was all these rules, so they couldn't trash the place, which sometimes I think they do deliberately when mm. they've got a search warrant. They couldn't pull down any walls or do anything like that. Had to put everything back where they found it. If they found videotapes, they could only watch them in the house, and they couldn't really like move anything um, significantly. So they only found one videotape, and it was of it was an unidentified girl who was unconscious. They were performing oral sex on her. Yeah, unconscious Jane Doe, who was a minor as well. Mm. Horrible. So all this was coming out and being investigated. Carla was known to... um, Basically, there was a weird thing happened. There was like a super injunction, a publication ban, because they didn't want it to affect the trial. Mm -hmm. So um, he opposed, Paul opposed the publication ban because he was like, hold on. I'm not going to get a fair trial because the public already thinks because she's a battered wife that she's innocent and that I'm the aggressor. Whereas I know that she's part of these murders, so I'm not getting a fair trial because she's already been portrayed as a victim. Um, but they still uphold this injunction, and it, but it was really hard to do in Canada because the internet was around there, yeah. and it's really hard to keep anything a secret, as Elton John knows. Yes, yeah, he knows better than most, doesn't he? I don't know why the fuck they bothered with that. I'd be more surprised that he wasn't having olive oil sex with strangers. Well, this is what I thought. I, I just assumed that was something he would do at least three times a week. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I wouldn't. If Elton John is bulk buying olive oil, I don't think he's out doing a stir fry. No, that's exactly. I, I think, you know, if that's what you're into, mate, go for it. I'd be more in, more disappointed if one of our huge gay icons wasn't like balls deep in strangers yeah. all the time. If, if it was like a super injunction had been revealed that he's just dead into his allotment, I'd be yeah. like, fucking hell, Elton. <laughs> That's damaged the brand of it, hasn't Turns it? Turns out he doesn't even like sequins. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't believe me for a second. Um, so there well, was... people were going over the border as well, because obviously in the area of Canada that this is, it's not far from New York. You just go, it's, it's not a long drive. So people going over the border to get papers. Yeah. And the... reading about the... They the were trial. bootlegging them. They were bootlegging <laughs> them. It's amazing. The Buffalo Evening News, people were banned from bringing more than one copy over the border. And if they had more than one copy, they were arrested. It's fucking amazing. There was a guy who was arrested for sharing information about this trial as well. I can't remember his name now, but he got prosecuted. And he was given six months, which is fucking not much more than what Carla got in well, the end. It was really complicated because basically... It was. It's complicated. I'm... I've looked at this and I'm reading it and I'm like, what is going on? Because there's so much happening. They thought they would both get off because there's, just like Myra Hindley and Ian Brady, there's no proof of who killed mm. so that they would get diminished sentences that would be for like rape and torture. They wouldn't get life, which is what they wanted to give them. So they decided that they would, and bearing in mind the videotapes haven't been found yet, they would, so the, basically the state had to keep Carla as a battered wife she had to be the victim. The court had to keep this up, even though they knew that she was more involved. Because she's already signed this deal. Well, because she's not... No, to get the deal... Basically, if she wasn't considered a victim, if she was considered one of the murderers and one of the rapists, then she would be an unreliable witness because his his lawyer would go, you're going to believe a rapist? Mm. That's like, it's just his word against hers, and then there's no proof. It's just down to, you know... Whereas if it was like, she was bullied by him, she was made to do it, she didn't want anything to do it, she never killed anyone, she was just trying to please him because she was worried that he would turn on her, suddenly that's a case. Ugh. And everyone believed that until these tapes turn up later on. So on the 30th of April, 93, um, the search warrant expires. A few days later, on the 6th of May, 1993... Ken Murray, which is Paul's uh, lawyer, he says to him, go to my house, um, go behind a pot light in the bathroom and you'll find six 8mm videotapes. I want you to take them and I want you to keep them, but you can't watch them. So that, so like straight away, like his lawyer must have been like, oh God, he's fucking guilty. So the 17th of May... So Carla got in the house, right, with this search warrant. She led them straight to some DNA, was like, this is where he killed her, there'll be blood Mm -hmm. in this carpet. And was like, this is the receipt for all the cement, which became very important in the trial. So the day after, the 18th of May, uh, oh no, sorry, it was 18th of May, she was charged with two counts of manslaughter. Paul was charged with two counts of kidnapping, unlawful confinement, aggravated sexual assault, dismemberment, and first degree murder. Now... On that same day, mm. presumably wrapped by Gil, Ken Murray, Paul's lawyer, 
watch those uh. tapes. He wanted to impeach Carla because he's suddenly seen that Carla well, is involved in the crimes. She's more involved than they thought, yeah. But he was really inexperienced and he didn't know as well that holding onto the tapes and not releasing it to the other side, to the prosecution and the defence, is unlawful. So he's panicking at this point, I think. I just don't think he knows. So, like, he's just fucking up hard because you can't go... You, it's not like the films where you can go, well, I have this video yeah. that proves that she's wrong. <laughs> you have to present the uh, evidence in advance. So is it too inexperienced to know this? Because the video showed four women, and we only know about three, being sexually assaulted. There was sex with a prostitute who was completely drugged and unconscious. Now, during the trial, because they were eventually brought forward and the judge was like, what the fuck have you been doing to this lawyer? And basically made him step down and get another lawyer <sighs> so he wouldn't get prosecuted. They These tapes at the trial, they played the audio, they wouldn't yeah, show them. Yeah, they couldn't really show it. Which is, I think they do that all, all trials where it's something horrific. I think they'd have to, wouldn't they? Yeah, but I, I can't see. grim in it. And what these audio tapes proved and the uh, videotapes was that she raped and she tortured them. And she was just as guilty as he was. Yeah, and he claimed that she actually killed them in the end. I, I mean, like, it's like, you'll never know who yeah. was true. In but them. she was enough involved, killing them or not, she knew they were going to be murdered. So, regardless of whether she murdered them or not herself, she was still around when that happened. Yeah. So, there was... Because she had this plea deal for manslaughter, the public went fucking ballistic. Rightly so. Because this woman's getting let off with a plea bargain where she gets two counts of manslaughter when she should be up for murder and kidnapping and all the things that Paul's up for. So, because they all thought that she knew about the tapes and was didn't come forward about mm-hmm. it because she knew it would impl- implicate her. So that everyone went mad, and her side of the deal, that like it was just this huge you know, problem with the law, but the, the state went, no, we're going to uphold it, we're going to keep our side of the deal, because she, she kept her side of the deal, in which she, she told us about it. It is very confusing, isn't it, this? Yeah. I find it confusing. Yeah. So, there was a huge kick-off, because she'd taken this plea bargain, and the public were convinced... When she took that, she knew that there was videotapes mm-hmm. that would prove that she was involved and that she should have been prosecuted for exactly the same things as Paul. You know, they were going to the judges and going, what the fuck has happened here? But the judges were like, well, technically, she's kept her side of the deal because she's given us enough evidence to prosecute Paul and that's all that she was asked to do on her side of the deal. So they didn't reopen her case and it was referred to as the deal with the devil. Very dramatic. It is, isn't Great it? headline. Great headline. <laughs> so in December 2001, the tapes were destroyed, as were the transcripts. And I didn't realise that this transcript's that someone's job oh. is to fucking sit there and watch it and type out everything you know that happens. It's got to be the worst job, I think. If you're a police officer... Especially one that's involved, like, saying child pornography that has to watch videos. Oh, for, fucking hell. That has got to be the worst job. I, I just, I don't know how you would ever have, like... I know, people always go, oh, the worst job in Britain is that person who's got to try cat food. Yeah, I, think I think there's think a worse one yeah, out there. I think it'd affect your life so much. You, your partner would be like, do you fancy an early night? No. Do you want to go to the park? No, there's kids there. Yeah, it must you be just, fucking awful. I think you'd always be depressed i wonder if this, they just burn through them or that you can only do it for a few weeks you know like if people go and work on chernobyl like they go to the site that they can only ever do it for like two weeks and never again it, yeah. because it shortens their lifespan by like 15 years it must be fucking grim it's gotta be horrible, really grim so in 1995 she was sent to kingston's prison for women yeah and at this point her mum's having breakdowns every year at christmas that is just a mum at Christmas. That is just a mum at Christmas, yeah. But obviously all this horrible stuff. And she's been hospitalised every year and oh. it's, it's horrendous. In 97, she was moved from Kingston to a different prison, which was called, which they referred to as Club Fed. Yeah, didn't they? Geloit Institution, which is only a medium security prison. Um, perhaps she did quite well there. Uh, she started studying psychology, taking classes. Now, she was diagnosed as suffering signs of spousal abuse by half the psychiatrist and mm-hmm. the other half were like she's learned how to do yeah. it from these books and she's faking what it is to have been abused so in Geloit this place this club fed and um, she had an affair with uh, Linda Verona I think you pronounce her name yep. who was an armed robber um, she actually she sounds got... all butch doesn't she <laughs> she really does <laughs> well this is the thing that she she wouldn't tell her parents that she was in a relationship with Linda and she said no I'm not a lesbian because Linda wants a sex change hey, speaking of uh, butch and lovely I I'm a, I'm a I'm a straight woman 
But whenever I see Claire Balding, I always think, she's like a butch princess Diana. She is, isn't she? Yeah. You feel I think, safe if Claire Balding I think Balding she's all right. You. If, yeah. if, I, you know, if I did ever feel the need to you know, become a lesbian, I think Claire Balding would be my first stop. Um, if you're not familiar with Claire Balding, she's a national treasure from Britain um, and a lesbian, which is almost, you'd think it is an oxymoron, yep. but no, it's fine. <laughs> she looks like, if you've seen this film Behind the Candelabra about Liberace, what Matt Damon looks like in that. Ah, okay. Yeah, Matt Damon with a blonde wig looks like Claire Balding. <laughs> She's lovely. She is lovely. So she, uh, in fact, Linda got released and reoffended to get put back in prison. Now that is Carla. love. That's fucking love. That isn't is it? love. And she used to write the letters. Carla used to write it, and they're very like girly handwriting, yeah, like on, hearts over the eyes and on stuff. Doggy note paper, wasn't it? Like note yeah. paper with dogs around the edge and stuff. Very like weird. Oh, love. But um, so Linda and her went their separate ways, and. Uh, Linda put the notes on eBay in 2008. And they, she sold the yeah, letters. Yeah, they got up to like $1,600 before somebody said, hold on a minute. Yeah, we eBay don't want this them down. And they took them down. Um, and she just said, well, I didn't want them anymore. Yeah, they, they, they were no in the use bin. to me anymore. <laughs> oh, you know, we've all got a shredder. They're only 19 quid from Aldi. <laughs> 4th of July. Oh, there's also... She actually had sex with um, another person in prison, Another murderer. She? Another murderer. Through a fence, wasn't it? It's such a weird so... story. So she, um, where is it? So basically, what is what is his name? His name is Jean Paul Gerber. Jean Paul Gerber. It was a murderer. So he, it was like attached to a men's prison. So they went up to a fence <laughs> and touched each other sexually, and apparently had sex with the fence, and they swapped underwear. I don't know how all this is happening in a prison. I imagine you could do that because I bet if you bent over and he. Oh, yeah. Put his yeah, thing yeah. through the. If it was on those diamond, you know, yeah, shape yeah. fences, you'd be fine. Well, I'm glad you thought <laughs> thought of the logistics. For I have not thought of that, and I'm I'm doing the finger movement for some reason. <laughs> you I don't really know why I'm are. Doing I wish, that. The, I wish the podcast was picking up that. <laughs> but I don't know how you would distract them longer. Maybe it's like in uh, primary school, you know, when a dog gets in the playground. Yeah. Like, There's a dog in the playground. <laughs> sure someone just let a dog go, and they're getting away in the corner. So she's like, it sounds like she's having a great time. She's fuck, she's fucking women. She's fucking men, and she's been quite clever because she didn't apply. Um, for parole in the first time she, she could because she knew that they would say no, no and you're only out certain amounts of yeah. times to apply and she was quite clever she kept it and she was like I'm going to show that I'm you know get this BA in psychology yeah and she wrote to her family and the whole, in the in the letter she blamed Paul for it all uh, she never apologised to the victims got this BA psychology from Queen's She's probably not on the Wikipedia notable yeah, alumni page. Not. But um, this is such a weird... Because like, I just don't think she's sorry. Because on the witness stand, she was referred to as being indifferent, haughty and irritable, which are, again, are those horrible. Brassy was probably in there haughty. as well. Um, but I don't know that she's sorry. No, I don't think she, she seems is. like she's sort of got away with I it. I think she's massively got away with it. Um, she was diagnosed with prison. They said she had ha- hybristophilia, which is apparently when you're un- aroused by your partner's sexual behaviour. But... I don't think that's, you know, it's not a real, it's not an illness, is it? No, like, I just think there's maybe, if, if that is your bag, do you think there's better ways there's, of... Of course there's better ways, you can join a swingers club yeah. with adults yeah. that want to be there. And it just, I don't know, I think she's quite manipulative, because this woman, this Linda woman, um, spent like 30 grand on posh underwear from Victoria's Secret for her. You know. And she got fucked off in the end anyway, so like, I just, I just don't know, I think it's... It's it's so similar to Myra Hindley, and everyone was like, "Oh, she was a really nice girl," and then she met Ian Brady. But I think it was always in there. Yeah, and then and then just totally unrepentant and didn't give a shit afterwards. And the fact that she's she has got away with this slightly. Uh, he obviously he's still in prison and he's not getting out. He's yeah. he got life. Um, he she's also not... once he got in prison, he, he just admitted to everything. Yeah, he he got in and he. he and I'm not saying, oh, fair you play, mate. watch videos with him giving interviews. He's just said, he was charged with this, and he went, yes, I did this, yes, I did that, and he's admitted to everything, and he knows he's never going to get out. Whereas, I think, Paul Homolka, Carl, oh my God, can I get these people's fucking names right? <laughs> ah! Carla Homolka, she doesn't seem sorry. She's had kids now as well. She had her first child in 2007. Well, she was released July 4th, 2005. She had the name Teal. She kept that serial killer mm. name. So to me, it's just little things like that, and I'm not sure that you're sorry. So she gave an interview to the French press when she was released. She said the reason she did it in French as well. The reason she did that is because the French press are less sensational than American press and British press. 
I'm not sure that's true because they were the ones mm. that printed the picture of Kate Middleton's tits on the beach. True. Um, which weren't sensational as it turns <laughs> out. Um, and it was sad. The to... royal boots? Yeah, the, the next queen's got f- fine tits. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you want cracking tits on the, on, the, on the throne, don't you? So she gave an interview with her solicitor was there, Sylvia Bordet. Am I saying that right? Bordelais? Yep. And her mum was there. With her mum has sort of forgiven yeah, her. Yeah, I, I suppose mean, do you lose two daughters? I know. I, I, I do feel sorry for her mum. Fucking awful. I don't know how you'd deal with that. Yeah. It's not great. Yeah. Oh. And in 2006, she tried to change her name to Tremblay, which is a really common, um, sur- the most common surname in Quebec, where she'd moved oh. to. 2007, she had her first kid, like you said. And in 2012, she was tracked down by a journalist. Uh, she had three kids... Because she like the journalist turned up and was like, "Are you Carla?" And she was like, "What are you doing here? And how did you find me?" Apparently, she was really sort of aggressive mm-hmm. at first, and then they were chatting, and uh, she was like, "You seem like a really good mum. I just want to hear your side of the story." And then Carla was like, "How do you know I'm a good mum after half an hour?" Which is sort of fair enough. Mm. And then Thierry Bordelais rec- recognized that surname. Yeah, it's the same surname as a solicitor. She's married to her solicitor's brother. Wow. Which I'm sure must be a bit not right somewhere. No, I don't agree with, with he that. He walked in on the phone and was like, our solicitor, whoever that is, and says that you need to leave immediately. So she never gave an interview to this journalist. Because the journalist was like, I just want your side of the story. So she is free. She could be... She could legitimately be the first serial killer to listen to this. She could be. She might be listening. I think as well, I mean, the thing is, you, you've got, got to go... She did that deal. She was in prison. She did what she had a time, and now she's out. Yeah. You've got to give her the benefit of the doubt that she will not reoffend, which I don't think she will. I just think she didn't get punished yeah. enough in the first place. And I don't think doorstepping somebody... I don't think having Facebook groups of people That's stalking her... Yeah, is is the way to deal with this. I found that when I was when I was looking for stuff that there's a Facebook group called Watching Carla Hamolka. So they found her, and it'll be like literally. I mean, it's what she did is awful. It's terrible. She got that plea deal under false pretenses, yeah. so she hasn't paid her time. But legally, she has. And you, like you say, we have to believe that she's yeah, got learned give... from it. She's got three kids who seem to be happy, well adjusted. I assume people are keeping an eye on them. She started a new life. She, you know, in that way, she is repentant. But like this Facebook group is like watching her, and someone on Twitter said to us that I think their like relative goes to school, and everyone found out in the school that her kids go there. And they were like, they're not... And the, the girl on, on Twitter was like, they're not very happy. And I, I, get, I get that. Mm-hmm. But, like, it'll be the kids that suffer. Yeah, it's Who have never fault. done anything. I mean, I know people are pissed off because you think she murdered... It was involved in these murders of these girls that never got the chance to grow up and have their own kids and, and yeah. do things with their lives. And you, and you can totally understand why people are pissed off and angry and quite right. And she's not had the punishment she deserved. And she's out. And she's had kids herself. But... Like I say, you can't then take it out on... It's not fair on her kids. No. I'll be honest with you. If I was her, I wouldn't have had kids. Really? No way. Like, if I'd been involved with all that, why on earth would you then have a kid to... And you're going to be tracked down. You're going to have your life yeah. made of misery. That's no kind of... But Ma- Maxine Carr's had a kid. I said, yeah, ma- but maybe she... it's a turning over a new leaf thing. To be fair, she did only pervert the course yeah, of justice, true, which true. people do seem to forget. Yeah, but we're not going to get into that. Yeah, that we're not going to get into that. I'm not going to stick up for her. But it's it's a bloody minefield. And yeah. she, the fact is, she wasn't punished. And now, I, to be honest, I would be... If I was Paul and he has spoken out about it, I'd be totally fucked off that I was in prison for presumably the rest of my life. And the person who did... Just as much. She was yeah. a willing accomplice who said, when he said, what would you think if I was a rapist? I think it would be cool. Who egg, possibly egged him on, was just involved in all these crimes, has now got three kids, is living in a nice area, in a big house. It is a big house as well. Are oh, you having a look, are you? Well, no, because I, I looked on this Facebook group and loads of it is like, oh, she got that house? Just as many people are outraged about it and they're like, neither of them work. It's gone proper daily mail. Has it gone Jeremy Kyle? <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it is it is sort of, it just doesn't seem like the fairest outcome, no, does it? No, no it doesn't. So that is Carla Hamolka. It was one of your suggestions. Thank you very Thank much you for that. Thank you for suggesting, yeah. Um, and sorry it's a big one, but we hope you like that. I'm I can't sorry it's I just a big one. That. Please don't take that. Please don't make a clip of that and turn it into like a text message. Of, sorry it's a big one, but I hope you like it. Jesus Christ. 
That's what he said when he was at that late fence before he pushed it into yeah, the car. Sorry. Oh, it's a big well, there's a dog running around in the background. <laughs> I've got uh, the next one was another suggestion yeah. from um This will be a big one. One of you lovely people on Twitter. And it was from Max Polio. I don't think that's your real name. Or it might be. Someone t- also suggested uh, this to us a while ago and we were like, yes, that's yeah. definitely on the list. It is... Dean Cole. No. No. Carl. Carl Pan's... I've done it wrong way around, sorry. <laughs> we do. We can't remember who suggested it. It was Carl Pansram. Yeah, Pansram. <coughs> sorry, I was making me cough that word. Uh, Pansram, we're doing him next. And I think that'll be a big one. Yeah. And then you do keep sending us your suggestions because we have got a, uh, a list going on yeah a lot of people are asking us uh, and if you know anyone that wants to sponsor us please do give us a shout because yeah. this is uh, bankrupting us yeah. <laughs> um, but it, people have said why don't you start a Facebook group the reason why we don't is because other serial killer groups that I'm sort of on to promote the podcast just get a bit full on mm. and I uh, just like what we always try and do is keep on the right side laugh at the right things yes not make it too sensationalist because the focus shouldn't be on the horrible horrible things that innocent people have had done to them it should be on the horrible horrible people yes and what got them there that's what we're interested in and they tend to descend into sort of like sensationalist nasty chat so that's why we're not and i hope that you can uh, i hope you guys are on our side for that. there's plenty of places you can go if you want to talk about that and hopefully our distasteful jokes are always about the uh, punching up and not down yes so i hope you guys get that is that all right i just i think that's fine yeah yeah cool we might get a website one day i think we'll do that yeah we'll get a website instead yeah um so thank you very much for listening there's thousands of you we absolutely love it keep telling people you know keep suggesting serial killers sadly it doesn't look like we're gonna run out anytime no, soon we're not. We're not. um and uh, thanks very much for listening thank you